So far, we've used the general restricted conjunction rule to calculate the probability of disjunctive events from the probability of those simple constitutive events. Now we're going to turn our attention to the conjunction rule and calculate the probability of conjunctive events from the probability of those simple constitutive events. So suppose grandma has two candy jars that she puts out each Christmas. And a fifth of the candy jars, and a fifth of the candy in the jars is licorice gumballs. And Billy's too short to actually look into the candy jars, so he can't choose, and he just reaches in and grabs. What are the odds of Billy drawing a licorice gumball from each candy jar with a single draw from each of the jars? So again, we have our two jars here. Billy's going to reach into the first jar. He's going to grab a piece of candy. In order for our event, he's got to grab a licorice gumball. Going to reach into that second jar, grab a piece of candy. In order for our event to occur, he's got to grab a licorice gumball. What are the odds, then, of him grabbing a licorice gumball on the first and a licorice gumball on the second? Well, let's look at the odds of him grabbing a licorice gumball in the first. Since one-fifth of the candy in that first jar is licorice gumballs, we can use the classical theory of probability to estimate the probability of drawing a licorice gumball as one-fifth. That is, one-fifth of the candy in the jar is licorice gumballs. The principle of indifference holds, and so it's one-fifth. Same for the second. Now, we have to ask ourselves, if we're going to use the conjunction rule, are these two events independent of each other? That is, does what Billy get when he draws something from that first jar affect the likelihood of what he's going to get when he draws something from the second jar? Since these are two independent jars, they are uh, completely separate from each other, and so the principle of independence holds. So we can use our Restricted conjunction rule. The restricted conjunction rule tells us that the probability of him drawing a licorice gumball from the first jar and a licorice gumball from the second jar is just going to equal the probability of drawing a licorice gumball from the first times the probability of drawing a licorice gumball from the second. We plug those numbers in and we have one fifth times one fifth or one over 25 as the probability he'll draw a licorice gumball with one draw from each jar. Let's try another problem. Suppose you have an urn with three red, two yellow, and four blue balls. We want to calculate the probability of drawing two red balls from the urn without replacement. So we've got our urn, three red, two yellow, and four blue balls. We've got one draw in order for our uh, event to occur, that draw has to be red. We've got another draw. In order for that event to occur, that draw has to be red. So our event is going to be a conjunctive event. Since it's a conjunctive event, we're going to want to ask ourselves, are these events independent of each other? And the key here is to look at the description of the problem, because the phrase here without replacement tells us what we need to know. So what this tells us is we're going to reach in, we're going to grab a ball from that urn. In order for our event to happen, that has to be a red ball. We put that ball aside. Now, from the remaining balls, we reach in and grab another ball. And that ball has to be a red in order for our event to occur. So our two draws aren't independent of each other. The probability of the second draw will be influenced by what happens in the first draw. And so when we assign numbers to our draws, then we have to take that into account. So we can use our classical theory of probability to assign the probability of drawing a red on the first draw as three over nine. There are three red balls. There are nine balls total. The principle of indifference holds. But when we get to the second draw, we can still use the classical theory of probability to assign our probability here. But now one of those red balls is gone. Now there's only two red balls and 
there's only eight balls left. And so probability of drawing a red on the second draw is two over eight. So we're going to use our general conjunction rule. And our general conjunction rule tells us that the probability of drawing a red on that first draw and the prob and drawing a red on the second draw is the probability of drawing the red on the first times the probability of drawing a red on the second, given that we drew a red on the first. And so we have to plug those numbers in, and we get 3 over 9 times 2 over 8. We can reduce those down to make our multiplication a little simpler, and we get 1 over 3 times 1 over 4, or an answer of 1 over 12. So now let's do another problem that involves both conjunction and disjunction. Suppose I roll a fair die twice, and I want to calculate the probability of rolling the following outcomes, where the first roll is always the first number in the pair. Second roll, always the second number in the pair. So I roll a 6 or a 1, or a 6 or a 2, or a 6 or a 3, or a 6 or a 4, or a 6 or a 5, or a 6 or a 6. So now I've got two rolls. I know that I'm going to use the conjunction for each of those pairs that are favorable outcomes. So 6 and 1, 6 and 2, 6 and 3, 6 and 4, 6 and 5, and 6 and 6. Since each roll is independent of each other, I can use the restricted conjunction rule. However, my event is getting one of them. And so I'm going to have to use the disjunction rule to get the total probability for my event. So I get a 6 and a 1, or a 6 and a 2, or a 6 and a 3, or a 6 and a 4, or a 6 and a 5, or a 6 and a 6. Now, since these are exclusive, I'm only going to get one sequence. I'll get a 6 or a 1, or I'll get a 6 or a 2. I can use the restricted disjunction rule. So for each of my conjuncts, each of those paired possibilities, I use the restricted conjunction rule. The probability of getting a 6 and a 6 is 1 over 6 times 1 over 6, or 1 over 36. And the same is true for each of those pairs. The probability of getting one or the other or the other and so on of those six pairs would be 1 over 36 times 6, or 1 over 36 plus 1 over 36 plus 1 over 36, and so on, which would equal 6 over 36, or 1 sixth. So by using the combination of my restricted conjunction rule and my restricted disjunction rule, I can calculate out this relatively complex probability of getting one of the various pairs of conjunctive outcomes on the roll of my die.